is the Rebel Author Podcast, where we talk about books, business, and occasionally bad words. Hello Rebels and welcome to episode 23 of The Black Heron. This is, as usual, a lovely fireside chat with me and Rachel and I hope you enjoy it. Usual mode of chaos, isn't it? (laughs) Hello, Sasha Black. Hello, darling. How are we? How are you? Oh, you first. (laughs) <laughs> I am a little sleepy, just waking up, still dark outside, oh, um, and happy to see you. I'm all bundled up. And I'm all bundled up. I'm wearing literally three sweaters on, um, three layers and of I'm wool. And I'm sweating my backs off in the, <laughs> in the dick 29 degree heat in the UK. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's been hot for us. <laughs> Hot what enough that I'm like, I need an aircon unit in my house. <laughs> if it is 29 degrees outside, you need an air conditioning unit. Just one oh, of those little rolly ones that you put in the window and move around, you know? I, I made the mistake of, um, so there was like a government scheme where you could have extra insulation put in the house for free because it would re- reduce the pressure on like gas and electric or whatever. And I was yeah. like, yeah, sure, come and do it. Uh Mm. Oh, mm. so now so it holds great all in that winter. beautiful heat. Mm. And they were like, oh, don't worry. It'll make your house cooler in the winter. You lied. They lied. <laughs> it probably does in the morning for a little bit. And then as soon as it seeps in, you're doomed. You're doomed. Mm. Those, those heat pumps, those heat pumps are nice because they're also air conditioners. You should just get a little wee heat pump. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get an air con unit because I'm not coping very well. I, um, so... In in California, where we lived in the Bay Area, nobody really believed in air conditioning, and then the world changed, and and it would get it would get like thirty two, thirty five in my office, and <gasps> I and I and I realized that I was going to lose every banana peel that I had, and um and we one year before we moved, we got an air conditioning unit for the house. It was life changing. I was just a nicer human being who could work do it do it do it i think i will i think i will i'm going to investigate thing is i have to give that task to my wife because my wife has deliberative so she will want to do the research and i have learned the hard way that uh she don't like it when my activator buys stuff real quick so uh, (laughs) i will just be like please can you find me an aircon unit (laughs) Yeah. And before we bought the whole house one, I just had one from my office that literally has had like a hose that's stuck in the window and then you closed it on the hose and then it's it's got to be done. I'm sorry. You've got a terrible view for listeners. Rachel's having to look at just (laughs) piles of boxes and shit everywhere. I'm sorry about that. Normally life is much Why do you have piles of boxes back there? Doing my first in-person event. Okay, so I am so far behind in podcasts. I realize I'm about two and a half months behind in your podcast yesterday. And then I was going to listen to the most recent one to catch up. And then I thought, no, I'll just catch up with you here. Um, so the live event is what? It's called the British Book Bash. Um, and it happens to be in Peterborough. So I was like, well, ah. well I'm, I'm going to go because I'm in Peterborough. So I was like, well, okay, it's literally down the road. Uh, and then I realized that I don't really want to do in person <laughs> and now I'm committed so I'm just terrified like for so many reasons um I don't really want to do it by myself I don't think my wife wants to come with me so I kind of have to go by myself which makes me a bit anxious and then I don't really want to like I'll get stressed about setting up and then I'll get stressed about unloading the boxes and then I'll get stressed when people come up to me and then I'll get stressed when I have to use the card machine and then I'll get stressed trying to pack it down and you know all of the rest of it so I will just not really enjoy the event i don't think and then maybe I'm having I'll vicarious myself and I'll love stress it. just yeah, listening know, right? to you like like that just sounds <laughs> horrifying i cannot tell you and i'm not making things any better so i apologize but i can't tell you how many times i've done those kind of events um and then gotten a migraine while sitting there just like because of the stress yeah um and people always say oh it's the it's the lights it's the noise of the people it isn't it's just me being an anxious kitty cat 
And it's just reminded me that I had a very fantastic talk conversation with somebody at SPF. I just did the SPF conference Ah. and they gave me a really good tip. And they were like, because one of the things that I don't want to do is for people to come up to me and go, oh, so why should I buy your book? And I'm like, because you fucking want to. I don't know. Like, do I look like a customer service person? Do I look like an Amazon storefront? I'm an author. We're the opposite of customer service. Like, so it's, and I was like, and so I said this to somebody who does a lot of in-person book events and she was like, don't worry, I got you. And she was like, so just create a poster that's like a tropes menu. And I was like, fuck me, that's amazing. So I've brought these acrylic stands. I just need to get my assistant to do the design. But basically um, I'm going to have each, like I'll print them in color. Actually, I need to, I need to do this today. I'm going to print them in color and then I'm going to have like tropes, main tropes. And then on the back, I'm going to have the, or like in a different one, I'll have like, it's, um, X meets Y on it right. so that they've right, got right, like right. the, yeah. So that's And you'll have it on it. Do. You'll have it set up so they can look at it. And you'll also have one that you can hand them so that right. they'll get home and do that. Because honestly, that is, that's one of those things that I actually have done at, at book fairs like that is it's the one time when swag will actually, so or, or bookmarks or whatever, some, some way of taking away the book. I will buy the thing later when I think about it, like when yeah. I'm less overwhelmed. So it is nice yeah. to have something to to hand out but I mean are you getting did you get the pretty books are you getting like no well I've got eight boxes of um from the kickstarter left over so I am going to take eight eight of them and uh four of them have the vibrator and four don't so I'll charge full price for four and then a little bit off for the other four um but the amazing thing is I've got four readers coming from like three different countries, which is amazing. So one's coming from Germany, uh, one's coming from Scotland, one's coming from Wales-ish. Um, oh, we well, just maybe stop. two are coming from Scotland. So that's pretty right cool. Now. Like just h- hold the presses. <laughs> one year ago when you were like getting, <laughs> ramping this up and you, uh, maybe maybe it was like 13 months ago. I don't know when it was, but it was like, I remember you saying, I don't know if anybody's going to read this. This is just probably the worst idea I've ever had. This is never going to fly, but I really, you know, this is this is what I, what I want to do. And and now you so have we, readers coming from different countries. Were we doing this before I wrote the first book? Or how long I have we been doing so, this? I think so, because Two Ruby Row was very, very secret. <gasps> we're, 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 we're almost, we must be at almost two years because I think yeah, we're up to episode 21 or so. Yeah, and I think we've skipped, oh I think we skipped one or two, but yeah, it's been two years and <sighs> you were telling nobody about Ruby. And I remember after one of our very first episodes, you said, I'll tell you the name after when we're off air. So you had yeah. started this idea, but you weren't sure it was a good idea. Oh my God. I have just done my annual lessons learned episode. I oh, did the money. Oh. I did the money. I did. Um, and I can't wait to listen. Oh. It was terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> well, let's talk, so let's talk about it because you were inspired to do the lessons learned and the money talked about by listening to my show where I, I always do it every year. And I know that it scared you spitless. So, yeah, so I did. will listen. But like, how did it go to share to share those numbers and to share the backstory, all of that? It was scary. Uh, I'm nervous of judgment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm nervous of people who haven't necessarily got the context of how many years it's taken. So I did try and put that into the episode. But I also think it's really important because I gave a lot of home truths as well. And I told people where I'd struggled even after hitting the goals. And I, yeah. Yeah. you know, I gave breakdowns as well. So I said, you know, how much I'd spent in advertising. I didn't go into, you know, super, super in-depth stats or anything, but gave broad brush figures, Um, you know, and the crazy thing is, so, okay, we're talking about last tax year, but this calendar year, I've already beaten last tax year's income. So I think I may end up like multi-six by the end of this year, potentially, which would be amazing. That's the front door. I know. (laughs) Yeah, I can't really get my head around it, I'm honest. (laughs) <laughs> it's a bit bonkers from something that when we were talking about was just a dream yeah and and for people who are listening you did this without a mailing list without a base without anyone knowing who you were you started yeah. from meth thing february 2023 i started at zero and it is only june 2024 when all we're talking yep. about and my audiobooks have officially earned out. Already. Podium, already. When did they come so out? 
the first one came out in January. The second one came out in February. The third one came out in March. And I, do, I don't know the detail of the statement, but I just got an email from my agent to say I've earned out. So I don't okay. know if it's all three or if it's one or what, but I, I know that royalties are coming. Yes. I paid out of pocket from for the Darling Songbirds um, because it was a it was a traditionally published in Australia and New Zealand. Then I saw published it everywhere and I hired somebody to do those. Um, and that was probably 20, I'm going to say 2015. I just turned out. <laughs> just, but I'm saying like it took, yeah, it took 10 years, almost 10 years to earn out because they, you know, they were, and you just did that. I'm just saying this to show that I can't, I, you turned out in six months. Audiobooks are I mean, not it wasn't cheap huge, to produce. No, but it wasn't a huge advance. It was like a modest advance, but you know, still. <laughs> I guess earning out for me means I paid for like, it was like $10,000. So finally I made the $10,000 back and now I'm making money on them. But, but, um, but it took, yeah, almost 10 years to make those 10,000. <laughs> audiobooks. <laughs> So well done. Yeah, I mean, well yeah thank done. you. Thank you. It has been um, like astonishing, quite frankly. I dropped into the top 1000 again today because of the um, another TikTok blue. Like I can't like I don't. It's just I, I can't. It's just ridiculous. It is ridiculous what's going on. I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say to you, if I'm honest. I'm just trotting along. Working exactly the same as I was before. <laughs> you know just, what is what is the what is the best part of all of this um honestly the best part is the pressure that's taken off knowing that if my car breaks and i need 400 pounds to pay for the car i'm gonna have 400 pounds pay for the car because like i definitely had quite a lot of months like that especially you know after i left my day job there there was a lot of time a lot of months where I never knew if I was, I knew I was going to pay my bills. So obviously I know that's a really privileged position to be in that I knew I had enough money to pay my bills, but I didn't have any money if something went wrong and then everything was always a scramble. So I think that pressure relief is probably the the most beautiful gift that I think I've been given. It's a simple one, but it's, that's, I'm really grateful for that. It's an enormous one. And yeah. what is, and what is the hardest part? The most difficult part of what you're doing right now, what you're working through. That having more money doesn't change your insides. Isn't that annoying? It's so fucking annoying. It's there's no more meaning. Mm -mm. There's you no, don't feel more satisfied or more no. authorial or nope. or yeah. Yeah. None of that. And that what I actually say in the episode that I feel a bit naive because I think I did think things would change on the inside and they didn't. And, you know, I had a big crash after sort of hitting the goal and ended up in bed, not very motivated for a couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, I do go into quite a lot of hard bits as well, which not everybody's going to like. But, you know, I try to always be truthful, like with the good stuff and the bad stuff. So I love I love yeah. that you're doing this. Do you do you do that thing that I do where I, I hear people, I listen to people, I listen to people deeply and I take in what they're saying and I... I know that I had heard a million times that, you know, being being published or being multi-published will not change you at all. It, but in my head, I said, yes, I appreciate that is true for most people, <laughs> but it will not be true for me. Yeah. I wouldn't like all the time, all uh, the time. Right. I am. I am the exception. I don't think yeah, in course. my head I am the exception. Those words don't go through. But I do think things like but but for me, I understand. I'm listening. I'm deep. I'll get this. It's things like. <clears throat> Uh, so I always say that I that I learn a lesson and then I know a lesson. It's kind of like Ooh. that, you know, because mm -hmm. there's knowing some, there's learning something and then there's really, truly knowing it in your bones. Just like I learned about writing to market. And then when I did write to market, I knew about writing to market, you know, <laughs> like I knew the consequences <laughs> of writing to market. So, uh, you know, or even things like I learned how important visibility is. Right. And how much tra what traffic is. I learned about that, but I did not know. I did not understand. I did not comprehend the compound interest of visibility until it happened. Then I knew it. Then it changed my strategic perspective on what activities were actually important. Mm. You know, um, so, yeah, I really feel like I have to learn a thing and then I have to know a thing. And they are very different experiences for me.
I just wish I could learn it the first time. I'm <laughs> <laughs> having mean, to relearn it multiple times. <laughs> oh dear. I am really um, proud of you though. You, thank you. you what what about like so much. work stuff? Because there's a whole bunch of work stuff going on too. So tell me about your work stuff and then I'll tell Where, you about my work stuff. What, what is going on work stuff? I have, um, oh, since we've talked, I fulfilled the Kickstarter, which was awesome and dreamy and wonderful. And you fulfilled, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what, what was, is it, was it, um, oh, was it this? <laughs> <laughs> it was is. it this look one? At that. Look at that! Look at so that! For listeners, beauty. I'm holding up. I'm holding up a copy of Rachel's book, and it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so wait. it's so cute it's so cute I did I I didn't go for like fancy covers no gold foil anything like that I just wanted to get it out but I do love how they fulfilled um everywhere quickly like I believe that Europe most of Europe got the books sooner than even the United States by a day or two I noticed um people have gotten it in New Zealand already it it just wasn't slow the shipping was not enormous um I did I I found the actual fulfillment using Kickstarter for the ebook and the um, audiobook just so cool, just so flippin' great. My only problem is that I had to notify more than 500 people and I didn't understand that they throttled you at 500 just in case you're spam. So then I had to send them an email and say, unthrottle me, because I hadn't put in all of the audiobooks in the first time. Anyway, um, but... It's just so slick and seamless and so easy for us. And and I love that. And even uploading all of the print the paperbacks and the hardcovers, it took it took time and effort and very careful eyeballs. But I have fulfilled everything except for the book plates, um, which I, I'm like they're sitting on my desk and I I address some, you know, every once in a while. Um, and one book, one person I do not have their address and they are not responding to emails. But everything else is done. And that felt so, so freaking good to do. And and the exciting part is that then Lala has got the uh, Unstuck as of yesterday up on Shopify because I asked her to, to do that. I didn't want it to be for sale anywhere until Kickstarter had their books, right? Because that's unfair. Like, why would they, why would you kickstart something that then you can go spend $7 on and go get on Amazon? So, um, or Shopify or whatever. So she put it up on my Shopify and it's up on Shopify and I haven't told anybody. I just told the podcast people about it today. Um, and that's at rachelherrenbooks.com. Uh, but here's something cool that somebody with a name I do not recognize who has never emailed me in any capacity before because I searched my email, bought the audiobook last night. So somebody had looked for Rachel Heron and had probably gone to my main website, which then shunts over to the unstuck thing. Um, it, I had told nobody but a few students, and this is not a student who. So I've made a sale in, in like an audiobook sale in the cold without telling anybody. And it just felt it felt so good. And then when I actually tell people, I told people I've told podcast people today and I'm going to send a newsletter out to my readers. Um, so I'll do that. Are you, uh, I'm going to pause. All right. Sasha had a face like there might be some there might be child drama, but there's not child drama. So no, we're all good. <laughs> um, so and then I'll send the email newsletter to my full newsletter list today. And that will what what's really and you have been experiencing this, but what's really cool is knowing that I will make money today because I'm going to push a button to tell 10,000 plus people that this book is now available on my site. It's not available anywhere else. I'm going to keep it just is, on my site for a while to experiment with that. Is this your first like this foray my, into Shopify or have you- My first foray into Shopify. Shopify. Yeah. Oh, it's just, this I is mean, going to be so exciting. L Lala has been building it for a while, but we haven't told anybody about it. Like I had said, you know, you can go look here to see what Lala has been building. But, um, and we're still working on you know, tweaking things, but- uh, but just to like tell somebody and then to make money into your hand, like PayPal so, paid me immediately. Somebody used yeah. a PayPal on there and I got a PayPal notification and I'm like, why did I just get $60 from somebody who bought in all formats? Like why? And this was a student who had heard about it. But what, what is going on? It doesn't get old. Like oh. every, every time I get a notification on my phone, I'm like... Like literally every single time somebody purchases on Shopify, I yay over it. It doesn't it get old. 
it's nothing like making, you know, seeing a, the number of sales you've made on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or whatever. You can log in and look at that, but that's not real money. You could say, oh, I made 12 sales. I made, you know, I made one sale on this. And then you will see the money, the $3, three months later from that sale. But to just the audiobook, I don't know how to price an audiobook. I haven't, I haven't even given it thought. So I arbitrarily slapped $15.99 on it. And that's just mostly money to me because it's all done. The book is produced. I'm not paying anything off. There's no earning out to do. It's just coming to me now. Are you yeah. you're wide, aren't you? Yeah, I will be wide once it's off. Do Shopify, you use yeah. Scribe Count? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because Scribe Count will suck in Shopify. It's amazing. It will. So have every... Okay, great. Oh, yeah, I... yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I mean, and when I say I, I mean Ed, my assistant. I have no idea. I don't even have to log, log into Scribe Count, but he'll just, great. He'll just add to that. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Little piece of me just died. <laughs> oh, wait. I look at all of his graphs that he makes, but I could not be bothered to go get numbers. No, 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 no. He makes charts, pie charts, graphs. They're gorgeous. They're things of beauty. And that's what I understand. I, yeah. Like, I, I, how often do you get them? Because I look every day. You look every day? Well, you're making Multiple a lot more money than I am. <laughs> Probably not. But it, um, oh, yes, yeah, yes, I look every yes, day yes. because I really like the the data and how pretty the charts are. Oh, and they have also, it, Okay, maybe I'll go look. Yeah. And it makes me, and also it gives you the breakdown, like what percentage are you wide? What percentage are you not wide? What, what, how, what format percentages are you? So mm. I can see like, depending on which TikTok's gone, mm. I will see like how that marketing has affected my sales percentage by formats and stuff. But, you know, this is like, I've really unleashed, like, I don't really like numbers, but I love data. Data mm. gives competition a lot of information. Yeah. So I really like the data on that. But yeah, I'm so excited for you, for Shopify. And like, I, uh, I just wish I'd done it so much sooner than I had because it is the best thing ever. It, ever. it really makes me feel like I'm running a business in a way that I have not felt yeah. for the last, you know, uh, 14, wait, no, wait, 2010, 14 years of doing this. Um, yeah. It's, it's incredible. We're so in control. We're and so the money control. is like yeah. five days later. And then the minute you get that first lot of money in, it's every single day. If you're making sales every day, it's every single day the money comes in. Wow. So like if, yeah, that so I didn't even know because I just made my first sale yesterday. No. Okay, so it depends. So it depends on how they've paid, and it depends on how you set up your Shopify. But basically, I think it's about every four or five days. I will, no, not every four or five days. On the first, let's say I made a sale, mm -hmm. I would get that money in my account, say on the fifth or the sixth, right? Okay. Um, and if I made a sale on the second, I'd get it on the sixth. If I made a sale on the third, I'd get it on the seventh. Right. right? So, so it just keeps but, rolling in. It just keeps rolling in every single day. What is cool is that then now I am focusing business wise on um, <clears throat> optimizing and making beautiful and much better all of my backlist because I have a lot of backlist romance. And I signed up for, I don't know if I told you this, but I signed up for and have absolutely done almost nothing with because I've been so busy. Uh, but the Sky Warren, Ines Johnson set me, uh, running ads to Shopify store for series. And mm -hmm. so after I optimize the firefighters and then Darling Songbirds, I'll start running ads to the Shopify store and just see see what kind of ROI I can get and and play around with that. So yeah, that's, that's be definitely fun. that's my goal after New Zealand is to um, yeah is to try ads because I haven't I, I literally I've spent like five grand on ads in the last year. That's you, it. you haven't needed to because you've got the TikTok working right, but but what else could I do? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, and also, and here's the thing, right? <laughs> Trying to be like unemotional about it. If TikTok does get banned, I do need another um traffic generation source. And what I would like to do is to at least understand how to do ads before that were to happen. Hopefully, it doesn't happen, and then it's not a problem. But yeah. at least if I have done some practice beforehand. Um, I don't have to do that learning right as the tsunami happens because everybody will flood to it, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would like to do a little bit beforehand. So what are you, what are you, so now you've fulfilled, what mm -hmm. are you working on now? Now I am working on uh, revising The Fix, which is my, that recovery memoir, which has been in the back drawer 
for a long time. But first of all, I, the, my my priorities are um, optimizing the firefighter series because that sells really well, and I want to I want to start playing with ads there. So it they, <laughs> this is how lame I am about my backlist is that I don't even have paperbacks of firefighter the firefighters up there anywhere because never got around to it. I just threw up the eBooks. Like these are the kind of things I'm doing. So as I'm optimizing for Shopify, I'm realizing, mm -hmm. oh my God, I have not revisited these categories in six years. So um, I was Are you going to do like, um, so how, how many books are in the paper, in the firefighter series? There are four in that. And in this town, there are four firefighters, three Ballard brothers, three darling songbirds. So that's seven. So that's 10. And I think there's, isn't there another series? There's at least 10 to 14 books in that series. So I'm going to try to drive all to that series. So are you going to, so do you do like four box, four books in the, and then it's a three or whatever? Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you going to, so what one of the, my best selling product is the Girl Games trilogy. So I do a bundle, all three paperbacks. They're not one book. They are the three individual paperbacks. Mm. Um, but I give like a 15% discount or something on it. I'm still making a ton of profit and it is without doubt my most popular Interesting, because they product. want the paperbacks. They want all this, the single paperbacks, not an omnibus, but a but a paperback. No, but the paperback. I don't do it. I haven't done an omnibus, so I they yeah, or or the hardback bundle. But big, but when they bundle and buy all three, I give a little bit of a discount, and that seems to encourage. And I put the discount like visually on the graphic. Yeah, as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That and makes then sense. that helps. Oh, see, all of these things I think are so fun. And I have been so busy with other things that I haven't had any time to play with these. So these are, this is, this is my focus right now. And then working on the fix. And then I'm working on writing like the, like three other books at a time in my little, did you, like in the morning. Did you, did you finish Seven Miracles? Cause I know you're supposed to revise and hand it in. At oh yeah. That's done. And, I've been, I've been working. Oh, that's, okay. that's been done. Um, and I got the final payment for it. So yay. I got the fi <gasps> final yay. payment for that. Um, because that one, interestingly, um, Usually they break it up into like either three or four payments. This one was only broken up into two, which was hmm. unheard of for a very, very long time. So I got paid when I signed and I got paid when I delivered the accepted manuscript with all the revisions done. Um, and so now I don't have to worry about that book ever again. And I will probably, I might not make any more money on that ever, you know, and I will <laughs> never be able to get those rights back because they they have dialed in those contracts. Um, so I've kind of let, you know, like Seven Miracles is in my rear view mirror, but I am thinking about the next witchy queer book, which I may keep for myself because I'm kind of feeling witchy well, queer. there's a lot of those kind of like dating a demon, you know, mm -hmm. like sort of cozy, mm -hmm. not quite cozy, but cozy romantic, romantic, not, you know, that kind of, mm -hmm. they are popular. And there's quite a few covers that I can think of at the moment that are um, up and some are in the very high ranking. So that would be... Uh. That would be exciting. We can talk more about that offline if you want to talk okay. about that offline. Okay. Yeah. So that's so that's, um, that's business wise. Yeah. What about you? Okay. So um, I finished book two. I Good job. You had not yeah, done that for the last time we talked. Okay. So I did all of the edits. Um, it's been to the editor. I got the editor copy back this morning. I did all of the edits from the editor today and I formatted and it's gone to my first ARC person. And then if they tell me that it's okay, like they're not going to read the whole thing before I send it out. But if they tell me it's okay, I'm going to send it out to ARCs tonight. And I've written 18,000 words in book three. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, so th the edits you got, back, those are mostly, those are like copy edits because if they were edit, like content edits, you would be able to do them in a day. That it was, I have changed my process. Oh my God. Tell us about the process. Break it down. I'm a bit nervous about talking about this. So I basically decided that I was going to write the book that I wanted. I was going to do my edits and then it was going to go to a proofer. And that's what I've done. That's, that's what it. I, that's it. That, for, okay. So for Unstuck, that's what I did. Um, I okay. did not use a developmental editor. I asked my copy editor, who I trust with my life, to run basically in the background like a developmental edit and tell me, does this, I told her, you're the first person seeing this. Will you please tell me where things suck and if, you know, and if it's not working. And we, I want to say very clearly to people listening, this is not, this is a, this is a pro move. This is when you have a lot of books out and you know that you understand story structure and character arc and you're doing these things and you're doing them in the way that you want to. And memoirs also have character arc and story structure then you get to make these calls. So good job. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I I mean, so that 
more or less is what happened with book one. I had somebody do a speed read Mm -hmm. um, and give me about four comments of things that needed changing, at which point I was like, yeah, I don't think I need to have the next one looked at. Uh, So I didn't. What I will say is psychologically, knowing that I didn't have another person backing me up, the edit took twice as long. Now, when I say twice as long, the first book took me a week. This one took me two. So we're not talking about a long time. (laughs) But in Sasha Activator world, it was forever. So I I don't I don't know. You are not a you're not a reviser like I do. I, I'll spend six months happily in revision reviving. land. I, I love oh my God, it. No. I love it. I, I mean, die. that's actually an exaggeration, but a good month or two, happy, happy place, happy place. And I'll do I it over die. and over again. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, I, yeah, I would literally die. I, and that's why, like, I literally just scroll control. I, I mean, I, I, no, I, I mostly just highlight and accept the changes. Um, and then I just deal with the co- with the co- with the comments because he- here's where I'm at. Like I am terrible with punctuation. I pay someone to be good at punctuation. Yes, that's not me. our job. Why would I question it? Why would I question it? I'm not going to question mm-hmm. it. So I just control. I literally go through a whole chapter. I select all and I click accept and then I read any comments that need I don't. To be dealt I with. don't do the whole chapter. I scroll the whole document and then I do them all at once. The whole book. Yeah, I should do that. All of them, that. 40, all 40,000 of them or whatever it is. It's it's right. really nice. It's just you just click and accept all and then you then you sort through the comments. Yeah, I, I think I'll do that next time. Um, and then the only other thing I'm doing is I have commissioned German translations. That's, so that's exciting. exciting. And how are you handling the intellectual property part of it? Okay, so I'm paying a company and the company is paying the um, translator. And the way that the company works is they go through DPL first and then a human editor does um uh, has like the the original and the manuscript and then they make they edit for correctness and then they have like a beta read team um and a bunch of other stuff there that is an extremely good organization and it's so great. We uh, Ed and I, my assistant and I got Fast Drafter Memoir done in German. I don't remember why we've sold like two copies. Um, oh, you know why? Because somebody offered to do exactly that for me. A reader really loved the book and she is a translator and and we worked out the deep L um, and then she was the one who came in behind it, which is a great system to do. And the fact that mm-hmm. like that's so that's so cool. Is it very expensive? No, that's awesome. It's that's, insanely cheap. I am great. paying probably for all three what somebody would pay for one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That and you are and you did such a perfect genre for that. This is going to do so well in Germany. I don't know. Whoa. I, I'm excited. Don't don't do a book about memoir, writing memoir. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> Um, yeah. And so, I mean, mostly I'm just trying to get book three done before okay. we, it'll only be drafted. Um, Let me ask you, uh, because right about 20% is usually when you go, oh no, what's going on? Um, so I wrote 18K and then I've done the conference. So I've had like two or three days away from the manuscript and I am very nervous to go back tomorrow. That said, I have not had the start of a book flow the way this has in a really long time. So I don't, yeah, I don't, I think it's because the way that I'm looking at this is, you know how, so we just said like the first 30% I find difficult. The middle 30% is just like you're trundling along. And the last 30%, I always smash really fast in a couple of days. Well, in a way, a trilogy is thirds of one whole story. So you're in that part. I'm in the last third. So I kind of think this book might just come oh. out because it's. I've been intellecting on this. This is the finish line, right? Competition yeah. finishes mm-hmm. hard. So I'm, and the, I am like 5K behind, I think. I think I'm 5K behind. So, and and uh, so I, I'm going to have to step it up a little bit, but I'm hoping that it's going to be okay. That's awesome. It's going to be great. And then you're going to do the draft and then come to New Zealand. And then when you get, back you will do Edit. edits and then publish yeah yeah and no i'm not going to publish until end of november oh really yes because Why? i am trying to bank books so i i took 
a sacrifice this year on launches in order to bank books so that I have longer lead times because I want to do more marketing, but also because I need to slow down and not slow down. That's the wrong word. I need the mental... Mm, mental space what is the, mental uh, i need to be able to give myself permission to sit down and read in the afternoon yeah, yeah. and i can't do that unless i feel like i'm ahead of the game and yeah. i've never been ahead of the game so i i have to bank books uh so yeah that is my plan i will be spending the last quarter of this year writing books for next year that yeah sounds brilliant that sounds so. so smart. Where is your strategic? Three. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a strategic thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, um, yeah, that that things will be a little bit easier. I'll be able to read a bit more. Last part of this year, that kind of stuff. But yeah. do you want to talk about your Kickstarter? Do you, yeah. Do you want to talk about Kickstarter too? Or, do you, or is we that just like so do. long ago for you that... It is um, quite a long time ago, but I did look up. So I did like sort of back of the fag packet calculations and I took a picture of it on my whiteboard and I dug up that picture because I thought you might want to talk about it today. So uh, I do have, but they are back of the fag pack. So yeah. Awesome. That is a great phrase, by the way. It's uh, <laughs> Lala it's is always, whenever, whenever anybody and, and, and Kiwi, when everybody, anyone says they're, they're going to go have a fag, Lala always just goes, like, really? They just said that's, that's amazing. Um, okay. It's a cigarette, people. It's a cigarette, Americans. Uh, okay. So mine is not going to be as impressive as yours because I, mine is a, was a smaller Kickstarter, but I will tell you my numbers just because I, I find them fascinating. Um, and I'm and I'm really pleased with how this went as my first Kickstarter. So I made twenty thousand and two hundred dollars all together, um, U.S. dollars. And then the and I what I'm excited about is to know what I'm actually taking home as the payout, um, which is after Kickstarter fees, payment processing fees, books, um, cover design mailing for the book plates, the book plates, uh, and taxes. Cause I like to take taxes out in my mind. That's, that that's not money that belongs to me. I don't ever want to see it. I put it into, into a different bank account. Um, I am bringing home 7,800 us dollars. I was hoping for about half. I was hoping for 10 K us and that did not happen. Um, so this is really good for me to know it is a, it is a little less, I'm stuttering a little less than half $7,800 us, which in New Zealand money is 13,000. So um, that, that well, you feels got your good. 10 then. You got your 10, they're just exactly. 10 New Zealand. Yeah. I've got my 10. And then what I do also like to do is for this one, six, I always have to do the math because I can't remember, but I wrote it with um, Patreon. And even at the low level Patreon, I had made at least $25,000 while writing the essays. So I haven't even done these calculations plus the 7,800. So that's, oh, that's a nice $33,300 brought in on that book before I made that first audiobook sale yesterday that was out of nowhere. That's you know, like an advance. It's an advance, but it's so much better than an advance because in advance, if you're making a dollar, you a book, which back. is about, you have to sell 33,000 of those things before you get the next dollar. For me, I don't. It's just incredible. And this is why I'm like, get that next book out of yep. the shoot. And I've just got yep. so many books that are, you know, I'm always complaining about this, but that are coming into land and I've just, they're piling up behind me because I'm continuing to write and I'll just keep continuing to publish. And I will, I will let my agent have the um, recovery book, but I've told her, I would basically told, I don't look at your face. Why? Why would you do that? Um, but I've told her that I made about $40,000 on, um, on this so she would have to get a big advance for me to not self-publish it myself so she knows that yeah so you because you'll want to do a kickstarter yeah 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 i think that would be i just really like the the process of it having it all done okay tell me about yours um so the total was 25,931 english pounds i don't know what that was in us dollars oh sh shit ton 
<laughs> it's a lot more. <laughs> um, um, it was 8% fees. So I ended up in my account with 23,856. The merch was over 1,600 pounds. The shipping was nearly, was 3,900 and the books were 4,700, just, you know, rough, Mm -hmm. roughly. Um, So it was just under 10,200 in um, costs and then 13,700 in net. That doesn't count tax though. So tax would probably be... I don't know what tax would be. Tax is, a, I, I don't know. I don't pay tax on like a individual thing. I pay tax on whatever the net profit is in the in the business. So it would, so I don't know how to calculate tax on an individual project. I do that, I, I, but I always, because I'm always running scared and putting money aside, I always put 35% aside for my taxes in the yeah, United States yeah. and New Zealand since I have to pay both. And that about covers it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we're looking at a very similar amount of like percentage to be brought home a little bit less than half. Yeah. So I, if we say about 45%, which funnily enough is exactly the percentage on Shopify as well. Wait, explain that to me. So after um, postage and books and correct after printing costs and postage, it's about 45%. Um, and obviously that will vary if you have a lot of digital product products on there, you'll have a higher percentage. So mine used to be definitely 45% and it's just creeping up. Now I've got a few things on there that are eBooks and audio and bits and bobs. So that will shift. But if you're majority paperback or hardback or whatever, it's about 45%. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really, it, really good to strange? know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. That I is have. so cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with me. And, um, oh, that's all right. Uh, all right. So it sounds like we have our work cut out for us. For yeah, the next I've got a lot bit. to do before we come to New Zealand. <laughs> and my son's giving us a running countdown of how many days. And like every day I wake up and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like please don't tell me how many days. <laughs> it is pretty it's, soon. It's about, is it less than a month now that you're, that you're actually going to uh, arrive? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It's like 25 days or something, I think. 24, oh. 25, 25, I think. Must be 25. I don't know. 20 plus, yeah, I don't know, 25 days till we leave, I think. What are the, but what are the odds too? Because like, I had no pull in getting you to New Zealand. Our friend AK had no pull in getting you to New Zealand, but you're going to come to New Zealand and hang out with us. Like you could have, got, so you could have been asked anywhere in the world and you, and you know, you have been. Um, quickly, how did SPF go? It was good. I uh, was on stage on a panel for mm-hmm. Amazon. Mm -hmm. and um for amazon that's that's interesting yeah amazon asked me onto their panel wow yeah i was on a three amazon girls um so yeah it was good and we did like a how did you get to full-time status kind of panel Mm q a sort of thing um and it was great i got a few laughs i'm always there to make people laugh really and hopefully (laughs) give a few useful tips and you know, I'm a whore for the stage. I love it. I'm like, yeah, listen to me speak. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I do. I love it. Uh, so it was fun. I did. Um, I think that I am getting less able to cope with all the peopling, though. I think actually uh, I'm getting considerably less able to deal with it. I actually really struggled. And uh, yeah, I, did, I struggle more at this one than I have at other ones. Um, so I don't really know what that is about. Um but Vegas is next. Jesus, ah, dog, Vegas, ah. No, <laughs> no, no. Do you, are you good at or bad at building in the absolute recovery time every hour or two? Okay, that's a no. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. We'll talk about this offline. Okay, Perfect. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I am. I, I have, I have our conference coming up, which will be so small and so lovely. It is like no other conference than you've gotten to. I think, I think when, when I was the, the keynote a couple of years, no, last time they had it. So two years ago, um, I want to say there were two or 300 people there total. That's the, that's, that's the, it's, it's so, it's easy. 
It's easy. And even then I was overwhelmed. Um, but I'm, I'm planning for the, I call it, I call it being a bed guy. I do it at home too. When I have just talked to too many people and I have thought too many things, I announced to the house, which is, you know, Lala and my sister, I am being a bed guy, which means I'm going in the bedroom and I'm putting in my, my big fat earplugs. So I can't hear anything. And I'm reading and under the covers in the bed, even if it's two in the afternoon, I just have to not hear anything. Yeah, so one of my tricks is to get rooms that have no windows because then oh. I can sneak into the room in the hotel and even if it's in the middle of the day, I can turn all the lights out and it's like it's a it's like being in one of those bed, those water bed the, things, yeah, you know, the, the mm-hmm. complete like isol like isolation, you know, the the flotation sensory tech. deprivation. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um and I did it by accident the first year and now I almost always ask for a room without windows because I can turn the lights off and I'm s- plummeted into darkness and quietness. And it I I can sit in there for like 15, 20 minutes and it's like I've had an hour and a half nap. I am my brain just got blown. I, yeah. I want that. I want that now. Because you don't look out the windows anyway. Like no one no. looks out the windows. You don't sit unless Who you're on the, the beach. Window? I will say it's a little bit um, suffocating the first time you go in. I would think so. It's, yeah, it's, it's disorienting, especially if you go in during the day. Um, yeah. But I very rapidly appreciate it because that is kind of my form of healing. Like it, it, if I need yes. to go back to the room Perfect. spontaneously in the day, it's like a shortcut. <laughs> Look at activated competition trying to find a shortcut, but you know shortcut. it is kind of it is kind of a shortcut to rapid like regeneration. Um, uh, that is yeah. So... so that's one of my best tips. And my loop earplugs are invaluable. Yeah, I, I have loops, but they're not quite strong enough for me. I've got to use my my nighttime like firefighter earplugs that just like I bought I brought over a box of them when we moved here. All right. Oh wait, I got to tell you the most important news. I forgot to tell you. I'm holding up. <laughs> I'm holding up. I didn't even tell the podcast yet. You're the first to know. I'm holding up the remarkable two, which is I got the in the brown folio, ever? the type folio. It is, I've had it for maybe four days. It has already transformed everything I do. It is always open next to me <laughs> to take notes. I was teaching the other day. All of my notes went in there. When I get up in the morning, I do 20 minutes of journaling on it. And then I do my 15, 20 minutes of my free writing, which is, you know, like idea generation always. And I don't have to move. I just switch it to the type folio and I start typing. I'm not connected to anything. There are no messages. I am in my peaceful bubble. I've got my music playing. I'm on my couch with the dog and a cup of tea. And it is the most blissful 40 minutes. I go to bed at night, these last few nights, just so I can wake up and be with my remarkable. It is worth every penny and it is fucking expensive man it but it had a hundred so day expensive. guarantee and i got some royalty money from stolen things and i got and it's my birthday next week and i was like this is what i'm getting and it is so good sasha thank you for telling me about it it's so yeah. good you are so welcome because i really truly believe that uh most writers need one it is, it is without doubt. I mean, I literally wrote, I would say, 40% of the last book on it because it wow. just, if not maybe more, yeah. uh, because it's complete focus. Yes. If you leave your phone in another room and you're just there with it and you're comfy, you're not going anywhere. You are just going to write and you can't do anything else. You cannot no, no. do anything else. It is. And it, and the type, the, the typewriter keyboard, there's no keeps latency. Up. It keeps nope. up. It is, yep. it is, it is worth every penny and um i felt I so guilty about buying it and i'm so happy that i did it is it's just a, it's just a business expense it's as much yes, of like is. if my god forbid my mac laptop broke today i would drive immediately to the store and buy a new one i, I wouldn't yeah. think about it that's i need it and now i and now i need this i've never had a tool that i need like this i never I- have <laughs> I know. I, I literally can't go anywhere without it because it is so I, I, do you know, I don't think I realized how fractured I was before I had the Remarkable. Uh, yes, yes. Everywhere. Everything was everywhere. Because yesterday yeah. I was still sitting at my desk and I was grabbing for, I grabbed for a couple of post-its to take some notes. And then I was like, no, I'll put it into Google Keep. And then I thought, no, it's all in the Remarkable. <laughs> put it down. It's all exactly. there. <laughs> Have you synced it up? So you're saving documents. Yep. Is it all yep. saved to the cloud and stuff? Yep. Yeah. I haven't yeah. paid for Connect. Do you pay for Connect? No. Like the first no. year free. I don't think I need to do that. Everybody kind of online need. says you don't need to. 
No, I don't. I haven't paid for it. No, I don't think I need to either. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I truly think it is a gift to writers that device. Like, and I will probably always, not probably, I will definitely always have to have them. Them. And I have tried One. similar. Yeah. Like I have an mm -hmm. iPad Mini. I've tried. I've tried those kind of things. Yeah, and they never. They have never stuck like this. But you know why? It's because it stops the squirrel brain because yeah. it is one thing. It does one thing extremely well. And there is no internet other than to send your documents. Right. There's no apps like the iPad because I've done exactly the same as you. I've tried iPads. I've tried this. I've tried that. You know, I tried the Traveler Free Write that unfortunately yep, it was too slow. It didn't work for me. Um, uh, and yeah. I just, yeah, I, I cannot praise it more. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We should like get a little, we should get a sponsorship deal for this show. For I'm so glad you did it. I'm so... <laughs> and it came so fast. I ordered I it was like three or four days later, which in New Zealand is unheard of. We are used to getting things in three or four weeks and I just kept watching it travel to me. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. It Honestly, it's so good. I And for anybody listening, like you deserve it. You should have it. It's And for anybody who missed it, you write on it. It's a tablet that you write on. It has OCR, so it'll convert your handwriting into really good text, or you can type on it. And it's brilliant. It's so good. Yeah. So good. Thank, you. Thank you, my friend. Okay, then Um, I will. Are we going to, where are we? I don't, you know, we'll talk we, about we're this We're going to see each other. Well, no. So what we should oh, say to listeners is the should, chances yes. are that our next one is going to be late. Yes. Because we will attempt to record it in person. It will be live and it will be about a week late or so. Maybe yes. a little bit more. Maybe 10 days Wait, and so you'll, for, you'll be fine. Yeah. So for podcast listeners, they probably won't notice a difference. True. For patrons, patrons, patrons will see a difference. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Maybe we'll do a little bit of extra or something like a hello just to them yeah. or something yeah. on video. Yeah, that'd yeah. Be cool. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, my friend. Happy Alrighty. writing. And I'll, um, okay. I'll see you in person real soon. Okay. I mean, not real soon. Bye -bye. You've got plenty of time. Bye. <laughs> Don't forget to tune in and subscribe on your podcatcher. And when you have a moment, please leave a review.